me sick. <laughs> if you want something, then earn it. It's not that hard. If you're a cheater, you'll never be anything but a loser. Anyone that's watched my reviews in the past may have noticed that I tend to keep them spoiler free. It's something that I pride myself on, as I don't want to be one of those assholes that spoils something and then blows off my mistake because the game is old. Grandia 3 presents a bit of a problem in this department though, because the main issue I have with the game could be considered a mild spoiler to some. So instead of putting the info into the review and potentially pissing off some viewers, I decided to give this topic its own separate video where we can discuss this topic and a few others freely. Before we get to that though, there is one thing that I failed to mention in the review. The meal conversation events and how annoying they are. It's a really neat idea as it gives you a chance to get to know the characters a little better, but did they really have to force us to choose which character speaks next? The developers had no problems in making other scenes auto-scroll their text, so why not these two? It doesn't really make the game more interactive, nor does it affect the way the story plays out. In fact, the only choice you get is to end the meal or continue, which just makes each party member repeat the same thing over and over again. But I'm gonna need a partner. A partner? <clears throat> this is what I have in mind. I can't do that! Are you crazy? You can if you want me to win. <laughs> so, what is my big problem with Grandia 3? Well, it's the fact that the only two interesting characters, Miranda and Alonzo, leave after about 10 hours. You could see a relationship blossoming between the two, but within an hour of discovering this, they leave the game. Now, this is something that is common within the series and also some other RPGs. However, in most games, you will either bump into those characters later on, or be able to backtrack to see them again. That's not the case here though. Once those two leave, they're fucking gone. Completely written out of the story until a very brief moment in the endgame movie. It wouldn't be such a big deal if the characters we were left with were actually likable or interesting, but they are far from it. So you're left with two very weak party members, and a story that just falls flat on its face after that. You do have some replacement characters that join your party like Donna and the moronically named Ulf, but they are just kind of there. I guess Donna does have a little depth, but meh. It's hard to take her seriously because her voice actor keeps making dramatic pauses. It's also at this point that the story takes a complete nosedive and becomes uninteresting, cheesy, and riddled with plot holes. Yuki and Alfina hop in his newly acquired plane and head over to Arkriff Temple to view this cringeworthy moment. Alfina, will you be able to love your brother no matter what he does? I just... Dear child, there is no future for those who hate. No matter what happens, remember, you must not hate your brother. Love him. Love. Love. Love is the only hope that your world has. Alfina, you must love your brother Emilius, no matter what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love, 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 love. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not a heartless bastard that hates anything to do with love in video games. Hell, some of my favorite RPGs like Lunar and Final Fantasy VIII have very strong love themes in their stories. But in this game, it's a bit different. Outside of the aforementioned party members that begin to fall for each other and just fucking vanish, here it's more about the love between a brother and a sister. Nothing wrong with that, but the way the scene was presented makes it seem like it was written by a third grade little girl. Another spot of plot writing genius was when the party first encounters Hect in the Verse Realm. Elfina grabs her hands and is shocked that they are ice cold. 
Shortly after leaving the Verse Realm, Alfina makes a personal goal to, and I'm not making this up, return to the Verse Realm to warm her up. Again, making it seem like the second half of the story was just handed off to one of the developer's daughters. What happened to the second half of the story? Did the team run out of time? Did they run out of money? What the hell happened to this game? Anyways, those are my issues with this disappointing sequel. Uh, feel free to discuss it in the comments, and as always, I want to thank you guys very much for watching this rant, and I will see you next time. <laughs> now do your best, Alonzo darling. After all, this is for our future, you know. <laughs> what do you think you're doing? Get your hands off my Alonzo, you little hussy! Hmm. <laughs> Ugh! <gasps>